Well, hey, thank you for joining us. I'm here with Ted Thomas, and Ted Thomas is, of course, the authority on tax lien certificates and tax deed auctions, and and uh, you've been doing it for a long time. By the way, great to see you, Ted. It's been a while. Thank you. Thank you. Looking good yeah. as ever, and flashy as ever in that cool shirt, Ted. Yeah, Ted has got a thing for really cool shirts, and I I feel always like dressed incorrectly in front of you. It's just what can I say? No, you're not. You're you're the, that's perfect for the internet. Everybody dresses in black. That's why I do the opposite. I guess so. The contrarian. Yeah. We, well, you know, Ted, we have a lot of conversations about, uh, you know, what you're doing, you know, tax liens and, and, you know, the opportunity and to, to buy a property. Hey, maybe for folks who don't know, very quickly, could you explain what buying a tax lien is? Oh, sure. Uh, a tax lien certificate is nothing more than a piece of paper, like it's just like a piece of paper like that. And if you buy a tax lien certificate, what you did is you paid someone else's taxes. Now, if you pay someone else's taxes, you're going to get rewarded. All right, so what you do to buy the certificate, you raise your hand in an auction, you give your money to the government, all right? So now they've got your money. In return, they're gonna give you a tax certificate. I think I got one on my desk, here's one right here. Okay, here's a tax certificate, okay? They're gonna give you a certificate like that. Now you've paid someone else's taxes. All right, now, most people will come in and pay their taxes later. They, something happened, they had a car accident or their kid was sick or something happened, they didn't pay the tax. So, while the tax certificate is out and it's outstanding and the people haven't paid, it could be earning interest of 16, 18, 24, all the way up to 36% interest. So tax certificates are an alternative investment and they're available in half of the states around the United States. And we'll talk a lot about those on these videos as we go along. So tax certificates are a good investment. Today, we're gonna to try to talk a little bit about tax defaulted property which is a more interesting for me because with tax defaulted property, you might be able to buy a property for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar with no mortgage and no deed of trust. Wouldn't that be nice? Huh? Well, yeah, that's, that's ex always exciting to hear that. I mean, absolutely. But here's yeah. a question around that too. You know, before I, I go to an auction and I buy that house, I mean, you don't just want to, I'm assuming you don't want to be buying anything out there, right? You don't just want to buy a property blind, correct? How, how do I evaluate if, if the property is a good deal that I'm going to be uh, bidding on, what, what should I do? Well, I'm glad you said that the way you said it. You don't want to just buy property. So let's let's talk about it. Some people go to the auction and they think every deal at the auction is a good deal. I'm here to tell you, the auction has property that are used and abused. It has junk. You don't want to buy junk. And there's some pretty good properties. You just touch them up and you can sell them. So you don't want to go to a property or an auction and buy unless you've looked at the property. Now, nowadays, you can buy everything online. All right, so some people say, well, I looked at a picture. Well, what if the picture was 20 years old? <laughs> you don't know, yeah, right? right? So I say, well, every woman would agree with me. I say, ladies, you wouldn't marry the guy unless you had seen him, right? Well, it's the same situation with properties. All right, so I'm gonna just show you some of the things that could go right, and I'll show you some of the things that go wrong. So let's start with the right. All right, if you look at the property, you're very quickly going to be able to evaluate, is the roof good? Is the outside condition of it good? What's the landscaping like? Is the concrete broken? Is it in the right neighborhood? Now, folks, you can fix up all the properties you want to fix, but you can't fix the neighborhood. So when you mm -hmm. get there, look at the neighborhood. If the neighborhood is bad, well, that's why the property is bad, okay? All right, so you always want to make sure you've looked at the property. Now, some people, they buy a property, they don't give it any thought at all. So let's listen to this. And I'm going to show you a video while I'm tell telling you this, folks. What if there was a hurricane? What if there was a flood? What if the property had burned down? What if it was next to a chicken farm or a pig farm? You're getting the idea. So properties could have problems. So you don't want to buy a property unless you have evaluated the property. By that, I mean the structure and the condition and the neighborhood. Now, while you're there, you could also start to figure out what's your exit strategy gonna be. Evaluate it, figure out what you're willing to pay. Now think about the exit strategy. I can tell you, if it's burned down, you're not gonna have an exit strategy. You're gonna have a problem, what are you gonna do with it? Once you buy at the auction, they don't refund your money. What if it was next to a chicken farm? I don't think anybody wants to be there in August because it's gonna be pretty smelly. But the <laughs> point is, you need to check the property before you buy them. It. It's not a complex thing to do. You do the same thing with the, with a documentation, for example, every property 
is going to have a file at the local county records and you can check and see if there's any default any defects in the title so you want to check the property before you you buy it. don't just go to an auction raise your hand and say i'll buy that you don't know what you're buying don't don't make your judgment based on a picture Hey, Ted, you know, you say you mentioned, you know, checking out their neighborhood, and that's really important. But what about things just about like, what if it's in a flood zone or there's some other environmental hazard? How can you check? How can you okay, check up on things like that? Yeah, good. Good question. Because everything about a property is um, is is available. For example, we teach cases every day in my office. I have what I call facilitators. And these are really guides for, for new people. So when new people get started, they can call the office anytime. Once they're a client, then goes here, can you show me how to do this? And they'll show them how to do it. They just, I'm doing this because they're going to tap on the internet. They're going to go to the county and the county records will show all of that. Matter of fact, this is so sophisticated now and so easy. There's satellites that go around the world. Everybody knows that. But now they have what they call a GIS mapping system, geographical information service. It's free. Your county has it. The satellite comes over, when it comes right over the property, you can look straight down at that property, 30,000, 20,000. You can get down, you can see that there's a geranium on the front porch. And that's how well you could check. Well, if it went way up, then you can see there was a flood district. You can see where the river came down. You can see where the water, you can see the freeway, you can see everything. All of this stuff is, is available. And that's what we teach. We teach people how to evaluate a property before they buy it. Look. When you buy it, it's just like getting married. When you get married, you're married. All right. So when you buy this property, you want to be able to sell that property. All right. If you buy junk, I can tell you, I've been going to these auctions for 30 years. The used and abused properties they're selling, the junk they're selling, don't buy the junk. And there's pretty darn good properties. All right. Now, I'm not negative on used and abused because a lot of fixer upper people will buy those from me. And so will the renovators. They'll buy those properties from me but don't buy any junk. But how do you know unless you go and look at it? You've got to evaluate the property. It's a must. So Ted, you mentioned, you know, the, the eye in the sky looking down, and it's so good. I think you put it, you can actually see a, a geranium on a porch, which yeah. that's great. Um, that's kind of, you're, you're talking about looking at a residential property there. Is is it the same process if you're gonna invest in a commercial property? Same kind oh, of sure. process it, of doing it, background checks? It's the same process. Um, uh, with commercial property, the, the good is, it's a very stable market. It's very stable. The bad is it's stable market. I mean, I mean, it's hard to get a lot of upside in commercial. So uh, the people that really make the money in the commercial are the insurance companies. What they do is they buy the property today. As a matter of fact, they build it. They dig the hole, they build it. They take a long time to do it. But 30 or 40 years now, when the people are passing away, they can sell that building and then they got plenty of money to pay people. So they are long-term investors. Most of my investors come and say, Ted, I got to make some money this year. So if you want to buy money this year, you want to buy properties that you can sell this year. So we only deal, I don't do a lot of business in big commercial, but we do small commercial, little, little fourplex or something like that, or small apartments. So we try to, we try to do lots of basic traditional real estate houses, vacant residential lots, small apartments and small commercial. Uh, nothing wrong with any of those. You check them out the exact same way. You do, you go and look at it. If you don't have, if you buy a property, you don't have boots on the ground. I'm telling you, it's a huge mistake because you're going to end up one day. You're going to end up with a property. You're going to wish you didn't have it. And then you mentioned the other county, the website can provide a lot of information, but is there any other information? Uh, can they provide all the information I didn't, I need to know about a property or a neighborhood, or is there any the third party knows services? Everything about every property in the United States, every time it's traded or, or, or exchanged in any way, because there's a tax on it. So the government's following every property. You couldn't get an approval for it. You know, there was once all farmland in the United States. Then the developers came in, they subdivided. They had to get permission from the government. So the government knows where the roads go. They know where the, the land survey is. They know what it costs to build that house. They know what the tax, they know I can look up your house. If you give me, you don't even have to give me the address. If I just know the zip code. I can pretty much find your house and tell you what their value is, how many bedrooms it has, how many bathrooms it has, what color it is, how old it is. All of that is public information. So everybody can do that. We teach people how to do that. Well, let me tell you, going all the way back to the beginning, now we've talked a lot about, about you know, checking out the property and making sure everything. How do you discover the property in the first place? How do you check for liens on a property? And can you do this for free? Okay. Well, it's easy to do it free because the county records 
have all that information. And so the county records are tracking all that. Uh, I find out about the properties because the county, I'm going to get one, I'm reaching at my desk. The county is going to make brochures like that one of the properties that are for sale. So they put the properties in here and they're going to give you the parcel number on every one of them. And you can look it up and find out exactly what the county thinks it's worth. In other words, the tax assessed value. You can find out a lot about the property. You can even find out what the minimum bid is before you go to the auction. So you can go and look all that up. Everything is everything is wide open for people to understand. This is a business that's been around for 200 years. I didn't invent it. I used to have black hair when I started, but um, listen, I could have, I could have, uh, I, I could set someone out one year old now, they'll still be doing this 100 years from now. This has been around a long time. Well, and you've been uh, you've been in this business for a long time too, and I know you've helped a lot of people learn it. And you know, this is just some good common sense stuff you're talking about right now about getting right. into a property. And obviously, there's a lot more to learn. Um, is there a way that people can get a sense of an overview of what what your classes and what your courses teach? You know, absolutely, there, absolutely. There. Thanks for asking that question, uh, folks. Stay tuned here. Uh, Austin is our, our editor, and uh, just watch this video. It only takes a minute. You'll really like it. It gives you an idea of what uh, what goes on at Ted Thomas, uh, the classes you put on. It's pretty neat, Ted, and it's a nice overview. I do know, though, um, if you want to give these folks even a, a flavor of what it's like to get started in this, there's an offer you have. What is it? Maybe you can tell them right now. Okay, well, I think the easy way for people to do things is just go to tedthomas.com forward slash free. Okay, let me say it again, and then I'll tell you what it is. tedthomas.com forward slash free. And folks, if you if you register there, what we'll do is we'll actually send you an auction list because I'll give you a free auction list and that'll get you started so you'll know what it's like. It's a pretty neat offer. Uh, take them up on it right now and get your get your toes wet in this. And it's kind of an exciting business. Hey, Ted, thanks so much for sharing with us today.